So we've reached the end of another entertaining and thrilling NBA regular season, packed with breakout stars, compelling storylines, plenty of off-court drama, and of course, teams tanking for Wembenyama. Now, tanking is not new to the NBA or sports in general. It happens everywhere to some degree or another. And the league has been in a constant state of tinkering dating all the way back to the 60s in order to minimize the impact that has on the product. But through all the changes over the years, there's been no getting rid of the nagging plague that is resting players down the stretch in order to better your chances to get that next 18 year old that's gonna take your team from zero to championship. So what impact is this actually having on the NBA and what can be done to improve it going forward? Or does it really need to be improved in the first place? There's been a lot of discussion on Twitter recently about how the league can better structure the lottery in order to prevent tanking in the future. And really the concept of tanking and the structure of the lottery go hand in hand. And we've seen different draft iterations dating all the way back to the 40s when there was such thing as territorial picks. This was when teams could basically forfeit their first round pick in order to call dibs on homegrown talent. We all remember Tom Heisen of Holy Cross who helped the Celtics to eight NBA titles. And then in 67, the league switched to a coin flip system where the worst team at each conference would choose heads or tails for the first and second round pick of the draft. And fun fact for all my jazz fans out there, in 1979, Magic Johnson was the prized pick. And it was a coin toss between the New Orleans Jazz and the Chicago Bulls. And the Jazz won the flip with tails, you know, because tails never fails, obviously. But unfortunately for them, they owed that pick to the Lakers that year. And obviously the rest is history. But on the flip side, we probably would have never gotten the Stockton and Malone era. So I think they made it out okay. And in 85, the lottery was adopted where each non-playoff team actually had an even shot at the number one pick. It was an envelope system with each team's name on it and the order in which the envelope came out was the order you picked. Pretty simple. But this quickly changed the year after to only include the top three picks. But I mean, could this be our answer going forward? Each non-playoff team has an equal shot at a top three pick and then the rest of the draft is just decided by your record. Seems like that would prevent a lot of teams from intentionally resting their stars in order to get a better pick. But I do wonder how it would influence teams on the fringe of the playoffs? Let me know down below what you think. And several iterations later, we have the current format. However, the lottery isn't the only thing that plays a role in the NBA's tanking problem. Another inherent factor is just the size of the teams. Unlike the NFL with a 53-man roster, the NBA has just 15 players per team. I think it's still 15. It might have changed. But that means one player has a much bigger impact on winning than other sports thus giving the lottery much more weight and influence on a team's future success. And that actually goes hand in hand with another factor, which is the NBA's salary cap structure. It's no secret that in the NBA, you have to have an MVP caliber player in order to compete for a title. That's pretty much universal. What's not universal is how this MVP talent is acquired by each team. Big market teams have the luxury of signing big name free agents with massive contracts, sponsorship opportunities, opportunities, exposure, nightlife, while these smaller market teams almost exclusively rely on the draft to hopefully strike gold with one of their picks. I mean, that in trades. And the current soft cap system in the NBA allows for wealthy teams like the Warriors to happily spend into the luxury tax in order to keep their drafted talent and sign big name free agents like Kevin Durant. And the Warriors aren't the best example to use just because they actually are a pretty well-run team that has drafted a lot of their talent today. But it's teams like the the Clippers. Woo! But we all know that bigger spending doesn't always mean winning, but that could be for another video. So I mean, what can be done about all this? I'm no expert when it comes to the business side of sports, but the recently released CBA agreement could go a long way to promote more parity in the league and help well-run teams retain their drafted stars for a longer period of time. It's things like implementing harsher penalties for exceeding the luxury tax. And it seems that teams will be able to have more than two supermax contracts. And not to mention players being able to participate in that sweet, sweet weed. 
Duh. But all of this could really just be a whole lot of nothing. Despite the uproar on the internet, the NBA seems to be as healthy as ever with a record setting attendance this year. And I really don't think tanking is a huge problem in the NBA. It's definitely present and it always will be. And as long as you're not the Mavericks and just blatantly giving it away. Um, these are decisions that are made uh, from my bosses. It doesn't seem to be a huge issue. And I think the league has done a great job at being forward thinking with the new playoff format that's been a huge success. And now we're hearing rumors of a mid season tournament as soon as next year. So anyways, I kind of like the idea of giving all the non-playoff teams an equal shot at a top three pick. Again, let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.